for a little shade because the phone overheated. It keeps doing that. I need some sort of heat sink case or something. I don't even know if those exist. Some copper or aluminum or something. Anyway, check that out. That's clearly a tractor. Compact, but I'm not sure if um, if just perforating the surface would be enough. But it it definitely does seem like it held water a lot less uh, puddled, better aerated, more integrated in the soil with the roots and stuff, and probably evaporated a lot of more of it. That stuff is more green over there. This will quickly. I've been I've been wondering if uh, the amaranth will um, will sprout this time of year. I've been wondering if the amaranth would sprout again this time of year. Um, mine. Even the tallest ones uh, broke that last storm on the last recording that I made, the last, I guess, vlog or whatever. Um, most of them broke. The tallest ones, then the ones that hadn't been buried in um, curcubit. This type of curcubit, actually. Here. Uh, I did a taste test, and it's pretty bitter. I, I'm pretty sure toxic. Um, reminds me of wild cucumber. Um, the seeds are a little bit like uh, watermelon. It smells a little bit like mango. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's not edible. But the other stuff, this other stuff right here, for example. Um, where is it? That leaf right there. Those two right there. Uh, I think that's an edible sour melon or something I forget what it's called but um, supposedly originates in southern India southeast India and uh, it's everywhere in the patio and uh, I've actually had to cut it back even though I'm talking about not wanting to cut stuff back because uh, it weighed down the trees too much and their growth was too tender. It was like bonsai training wires, weights. Look at that. That's a lot of You could have some dogs or something. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they actually let this part fill up with water yeah, intentionally. So I'm not sure about the rest of that. There, there definitely should be some local reservoir for water, rainwater. Least, um, least cleaning, least treatment to be done on it. After the storms, the air is really clear, so you, you could probably get a little look at that. Right there. That way is Benya. Through there. That road will go through to <sighs> yeah, uh, 
So that stuff is out of this little lantern looking rough fruit. I suspect that it might be, I don't know. I kept it around. I even picked some off the side of the road and I kept it around because I don't know what most of the stuff is and uh, my family keeps telling me that I got to put it down or I got to do that with it. And I don't know if they're joking. I don't know if they're really serious. If they're joking or not, I don't know if like, they know what all the points are, but it really seems like they don't, because they care, they want them around, and so they want like stuff to be trimmed and cut back, and I, and I get that, but like I don't want to get rid of them, this is the, Completely destroying the side of the canal. This is an old one, which is really old. I think that's a termite sound. I'm not sure. It might be some sort of bee or something. I'm not sure. Figure out. Oh, uh, update on the, uh, the iguana that I released. The female juvenile, she's fine. She's fine. She, I saw her at the front door. So maybe she's leaving the patio now, finally. Today's October 1st. Um, maybe because I cut too much back. She doesn't have a lot of hiding space. And stuff to eat. Check out that bird nest right there. So maybe she's starting to leave. But um, she doesn't look as healthy as Una's, which I thought she would be healthier after she got out and about and released her. Um, no, she, she came back all the way. She got healthy, but now it looks like she she's not eating enough. But you know, at least she's free, right? straight out of my hand now. Uh, Unas has eaten straight out of my hand um, without being held and he didn't run away. Um, he, what I think is cassia leaves. Um, I haven't moved those, like I said the other day, maybe two days ago. It was the 29th. A couple days ago, um, my uncle brought over some bamboo. We still don't know what variety. On the Western Garden Handbook or ID book, it, uh, I guess I could get a selfie here. Button. Button. Okay. I should be able to reflect on that there. Anyway. Yeah, so. Uh, the handbook has like three full, oh, oops, has like three full pages of bamboo, um, species, varieties, of, there's a lot of bamboo, and, um, I've only seen the clump that is over there, it's like almost right there, right there, uh, and then in town, all the way over there, uh, two, uh, one by the river and then one somebody's patio. I asked the woman if I could return to get some root cuttings. She said yes, um, I might return soon, but um, definitely before winter sets in, um, so I could get a little bit of the warm blowing season. I mean, November to 
next drains is dry and it's not as warm, but it's still growing. So it's okay. It's tropics. Um, right, so it seems to be the same variety. I'm pretty sure it is used as. They've said it's good for basket making, basket weaving. Um, I'm not sure if it's good for anything else other than other uses. My main interest in it is charcoal, so I could put it into the soil to remediate the stuff, so I can start eating out of the soil sooner than later. Stuff like this right here, that's probably loads, loads less contaminated than what I have in the patio. So much less. But yet, on the roadsides, you get all this burning of plastic and trash and stuff. Is the, the difference is really stark. Um, like over in TJ, you know, we have a lot of uh, trash burning in the streets and stuff. So like the community ponds are heavily saturated and stuff. But most people's yards, most people's yards probably are not. But then also like to the nurseries and the stuff that they sell you soil they dig up from stuff and it has like plastic stuff mixed in and it's like the different stages of de decomposition you, you see it all sun beaten tattered and stuff different types of plastic so the, even that's less clean than that soil right there that soil is pretty clean as far as like the plastic dioxins and trash burning except and then there's the other part the pesticides that get used typically the lands around here don't get heavy heavy pesticide use like the big ones like you can see the size of the, you know, the plots are, you can walk across them um, they're not major land uh, conglomerates or whatever um, so you don't see the mass industry like fully machinated, almost automated. Now they've got agriculture drones. It's nothing like that as far as saturation of toxins, but it's still very casualized. And there almost is no uh, real. I mean, organic seems silly here. Uh, you see the waves of pests that fly through here. Look. Can I eat? Yeah, um, like as soon as the, the rains start, all the insects that lived out in the mountain right there, they have like all this green and, and they just cross over here and it just fills the. You can see like. The birds have made holes in that, but it's, uh, there's termites and other things. Yeah, so it sounds silly to me, so it seems naive when you say it. Um, and especially when um, like you speak to somebody who has a little bit of a, you know, trust in speaking openly to you, they won't like tiptoe around the fact that it's like kind of sounds ridiculous. But then you see the amaranth, and did you see that three, four meters tall? There's lights all over the cell phone. Oh, I should probably walk. Oh, I might, I might try to get, I don't know. It, it might not be cut back before November. Um, yeah, the stuff, like, barely grows up to, like, here. You know? Maybe, maybe here. Like, a meter, a meter and a half. It doesn't, it doesn't get that tall. Maybe it does have seed production regularly, but I've seen that pruning it back increases the seed production by a lot. Um, it, it seems to like disturbed soil, but uh, it, I don't know. I haven't figured it out. Do whatever it prefers in a 
honest, again, I still haven't looked up um, Amaranthus Pinatus hybrids, so I can do that. But yeah, like how tobacco grows here without much effort, how castor bean grows here without much effort. Um, I'm pretty sure the castor bean was going for oil. Uh, and the Latinos, when cheaper, less shrubby, less, I guess, more efficient um, oil production was favored in other regions. Tobacco is still grown here. Um, it seems tobacco is one of the big ones. I was told pig would green, but I haven't seen very many pigs around here. So like food for pigs, uh, corn, get some fat real quick. They like the stuff, the amaranth stuff. Um, it hasn't fallen back into use um i gotta go into town i gotta get out of the way here soon uh i gotta go into town and connect with some religious groups to see if i could find out what all that's about but i'm just gonna go around the other way Yeah, so, watch it. Yeah, uh, I got the microphone in, so it's probably recording. Fine. Oh. They seem a lot like the monitor lizards when they're fully grown. I don't see any here. Over in Dukeman, by the river, you can see a lot of them are congregated for the social, so they're more social than monitor lizards, so maybe that's one of them. I'll be able to tell them apart sooner or later. <laughs> 